Hello everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Cthulhu Saves the World. I hope I got that pronunciation right for once. Now this is an RPG that's actually been out on Steam as well as Xbox Live Indie Games for like... It's been on the computer for at least four months now. I think it's been on uh, Xbox Live Indie Games for much longer than that. But the reason I'm doing this video, it's my first time playing it through, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to give some first impressions. So the basic mythology that's going on here is we're playing as Cthulhu. Cthulhu obviously being an HP Lovecraft monster, supposedly so giant and terrible that he can cause insanity to spawn in men just by looking at them. But here, I don't know, he looks a little bit more like a bat with a, I don't know, like a lightsaber. And of course behind him we've got, well not of course, I guess we've got a, our first character that we've added to our party who was named Umi. Basically she fell in love with us and the story here is that Cthulhu has started doing good deeds. Normally he rises from the ocean and wants to destroy the world, but a mysterious man took all his power and the only way that he can regain it is to do heroic deeds in order to unlock his true mysterious power and terrible power. So she's fallen in love with us, she is smitten dis despite our uh, crustacean-like appearance. We're not too far into the game, but I've gotten to my first quest here, which is basically to find this boy's dog named Shane. I've played about, I don't know, a few, close to an hour I would say at this point. So we've got to find Shane. I think I know exactly where to go, so this seemed like a pretty good time to show off what the game is all about. So this is an RPG, as you can probably tell just by looking at this overworld, overworld screen here, and it's very reminiscent of like 16-bit and 8-bit RPGs, especially in that it has random battles. So here, I'll get a chance to talk about the battle system. So we'll start, and we can see we control Cthulhu, we can do an attack, which does 46 damage, we can do some techniques, show off those, one of them grants insanity and does damage. Insanity will cause enemies to take more damage as well as sometimes be stunned. We've got Death Blow, which is a combo finisher. We'll talk about combos in a while. We've got Flame Strike, which costs a little bit of magic. As you can see, I've got health and magic up there, but it does an extraordinary amount of damage. Let's use Flame Strike right away. I've also got some potions that I can use, and Unite, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But let's use Flame Strike right away, and we'll use it on one of these punks. And then we've got Umi, same thing, she can do an attack, but obviously as a healer she does a little bit less default damage. She's got a couple of techniques that cause insanity or blindness, and she's got some spells that damage everybody. So I'm going to use this Flood spell, which will damage everybody on the screen. So they've done some damage to me. That's Flood being cast right there, 21 damage to all of them, and then Cthulhu pretty much destroyed that one right there. Now, every round the monsters increase in strength, so they started at 100%, now they're at 110%. Let's go with a regular attack. Should be enough to kill off this Molly Dolly. And what do we have here? Let's use her Siren's Call technique to add insanity and stun to this punk so he can't hurt us. Although he might get one attack in. No, he did not, actually. So the punk is stunned. Molly Dolly should be about ready to die. Okay, and we'll just use regular attack on the punk. Now the Oh, Cthulhu actually got defeated by the punk. The good news is uh, the punk should die right here. Excellent. After a battle, your health always regenerates. You get a little bit of magic left, but uh, or you get a little bit of magic back, but you always get full HP, and the experience goes to Cthulhu, even though he got killed during that match. Now let's continue onwards here. The cool thing is, even if you don't like random encounters, you only have to do a set number of them. The game basically gives you the option of choosing when to do random encounters. Uh, if you have fought 25 random encounters, then you can actually turn off random encounters. They, they automatically turn off for the rest of that area. What are we fighting here? Swordsmen and bats. Now another funny thing, let's use Unite here actually. So with a Unite, I can do a combination attack with Umi and Cthulhu. So I'll summon a Kraken here, and the Kraken will deal damage. Wow, I'm getting my ass kicked. The Kraken will do deal damage to all of these guys automatically. Now let's see what kind of health these guys are at. The bats are nearly dead. But, the swordsmen are still alive, so let's use our flame strike and take out one of these swordsmen, hopefully, and then we'll use her siren's call to stun the other one. Oh god, they have initiative over me. I'm getting murdered here. Alright, so there's one swordsman dead, all the bats are dead, and all I have to do is murder the swordsman and then we'll be okay. He can't kill both of us in one hit. Oh, he's stunned, excellent. So we killed him, and got a little bit more experience, cool. What I was trying to say is that you can turn off random encounters, but also, uh, the game isn't just a straight RPG, it definitely makes fun of itself and other RPGs in this ilk a lot. Uh, I'm trying, finding it hard to give salient commentary while we have all this uh, madness going on, essentially. Hmm, how should we handle this right off the start? You can see I'm not gaining as much MP back uh, per fight as I'm losing per fight. 
Let's use blood right away. It's something that damages everybody. I've got serious initiative problems against these guys. But I should be able to murder these spiders pretty quickly nonetheless. Okay, one's dead and then one more. He'll get one more hit on you. It doesn't matter, again, because you get the HP every time. Hopefully they'll be able to level up. The game has a great sense of humor. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to find some examples of that rather than just relying on me talking about it. We're just basically going to run around this cave until we discover that dog that has been lost. So we're going to get these swordsmen out of the way right off the bat, hopefully, because they're pretty powerful. Let's see if we can murder that one right here. Uh, and we will use Flood again. And hopefully I'll find a, a way to increase my H or my MP soon. The swordsmen should be dead on this next attack. But if not, we'll cause Umi to attack it as well. Oh man, Umi could die! Umi is dead! But that's not a problem, these bats are going to die anyway. Alright, so Umi will come back. And I'll just continue exploring here, trying to find the dog. I hate when games do this, I'm kind of finding it hard to find my way around. But I'm actually really enjoying my time with this game so far. I'm going to use Unite here. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with it, like I said, under an hour. But normally, I'm not a huge RPG fan, which I know is sacrilege for a lot of you guys. But, uh... I'm, I'm actually enjoying this game an awful lot so far, and the game is $3 on Steam. That's absurd. So cheap. Let's use Flood here. So really, uh, if you're a fan of this genre, this should be a no-brainer. Uh, this will be definitely right up your alley. Okay, so we got some level up here. Now, whenever you level up, you can see Umi leveled up. We get a choice between two bonuses. We can take this one, level up A, or level up B. So level up A gives us a spell for full heal. Revives and cures, but it resets the combo. We gotta talk about combos still. Or add cure. Passive ability, so heal spells also cure ailments. Let's use full heal. That's fine by me. And I'll continue exploring here in the hopes that I actually discover this dog or the way out. Hmm, okay. Who are we fighting now? Some cobras. I really gotta get some MP back. I'm, I'm in a rough spot here. Let's take out the cobras right off the bat. As long as they don't have resistance, I should be able to take them out in one hit with... Cthulhu. They have so much initiative over me, though. I've got to increase my agility. Alright, the Cobra's dead. Both of these Cobras should die as well, but can I take them out quickly enough before they take me out? We'll see. Uh, I think I'm going to be alright. Oh, Cthulhu is nearly dead, but that's okay. Let's go up here. Hey, we found the dog! Uh-oh. Here we get a chance to see some of the dialogue in the game, which is usually actually pretty hilarious. Normally I'm not a fan of this like meta game humor. This dog has despoiled the sacred burial ground with its digging for bones. It must atone by dying. So we're gonna fight a ninja spirit here. Yeah, it's cool Shane, I got you. I rescued all those dogs in Cave Story. I should be able to take you, this guy out, rescue you. Lots of ninja stars there. Yeah, this guy's got 800 hit points. That's an awful lot. So how are we going to take this guy out as best as we can? Let's start by doing a Flame Strike. does an awful lot of damage. And we'll get a chance to talk about combos here. So this Flame Strike will do one attack, which will increase our combo meter by one. And we will also do uh, the Stun Attack to stun him right off the bat. So we did 28 damage. But now he is stunned, and I did 217 damage to him. Now I can do that again, but it'll cost me more magic points, but that's okay. We'll do that. And we will also, I can't use this because I've already used Siren's Call once before. We will do this attack, which could potentially add blindness. Oh, it was stunned again. So there's, it did not get hit by the blindness, but it did take damage. And you can see my combo meter is up to th times three, because I've hit him three times so far. He's only got 295 health left. There's some combo finishers, like I have Death Blow here. Every time I get another multiplier, or I get a multiplier increase on my combo, uh, the amount of damage I do with Death Blow increases. It always costs the same amount of magic points, but the amount of damage I do increases. So if I can wait maybe one more time, I should be able to end this fight in style. Right now it's not even doing as much as my Flame Strike. So we'll do Flame Strike, and let's just do a regular attack, because you never know when I might have to do a full heal. So now, how much health does it have left? Only 53 health? Let's use our Death Blow, which now does 147 damage. We'll end the fight in style. Oh, did a lot of damage to both of my guys, but the Death Blow defeated it. Excellent. Gained a lot of experience and a lot of gold. So Cthulhu is now leveled up. Hmm, I can add this new spell or new technique. Targets all enemies and adds insanity. That's really useful. It targets one enemy and adds insanity and resistances go minus 50%. Let's target all enemies and add insanity, even though it's more expensive and doesn't have the resistance bonus. 
Oh, no. We lost the dog. All right. We're going to head back. I should point out that Umi is, is super into Cthulhu. Cthulhu is not interested at all. Despite the fact that you'd think, uh, you know, as an octopus type character, he doesn't get a lot of play. Apparently, uh, he is still not interested. I guess maybe he's more into octopuses. Octopi? This seems to come up in almost all of my videos recently. So we'll just do the same thing that basically we've been doing. Except we're going to rely more on physical attacks now because uh, I'm almost out of magic points. Hopefully we don't run into too difficult of enemies. Now that we found the dog, let's try to find our way out. Hopefully I don't get too many more random encounters. Oh, there's the exit right there. So now we're just going to walk back to town. More punks. Hmm. I got a lot of health. I think I should just be able to take them out with physical attacks. I like that the battles in this can go really fast. Right now I'm just hammering on the A button on my Xbox 360 controller. Of course, you can also use your PC. It controls fine with that as well. But it was originally built on Xbox Live Indie Games. So I think... I would prefer to use the 360 controller. This could be a good opportunity to use something like Flood, but instead I'm just going to use Physical Attacks. Ooh, did a lot of damage there. Oh man, Umi is dead already, but... Uh, oh lord, I actually am going to have to use... I might actually die here, that's embarrassing. Maybe I can use my potion on myself before they kill me. No, instead I'm going to die. Well, this is actually cool, because it gives me a chance to show off how the game actually handles defeat. You can see it says here... I have two times one ups, so basically the game has one ups, and if you use those, then you continue the game from that battle. I've used an awful lot of them already, but hopefully I'll get a chance to buy some more. Because I kinda suck at this game. Let's add insanity to all these enemies, and then we will use this bitty to do Flood. Man, they have so much initiative! It's hardly fair. Alright, so Flood did a lot of damage. Now, all the enemies are insane, which means they should be taking more damage. All I can do with Cthulhu is attack or, or give potions right now. Let's take out a spider. Uh, and then let's use her to use Flood one more time. Oh, that was easy. All right, now, with them dead, we'll all get full HP again. And I'm almost back to the town. I can go to the inn and uh, recover my magic points, which is really useful. First, let's go talk to this guy. His dog's back. Of course I rescued Shane. Please take this. It belonged to my grandfather. I got the trance sword. And Cthulhu got more heroic. Excellent. So let's go to our equipment here. And we will add the Trance Sword. Let's see, I've got the Iron Sword right now. Strength plus 40. Mag. I've forgotten what that does. Magic. Oh, obviously. Plus 10. Vitality plus 20. Trance Sword. Magic plus 60. Agility plus 40. Will plus 20. Alright, that seems more effective. How about armor? Nothing, nothing special there. Let's go back to the inn and recharge our magic. So this is just your standard... Uh, Standard town here. Let's go talk to this guy. I will save and replenish my magic points. Worth noting, you can save at any time in this game, which is a kind of a change compared to other RPGs, and it's actually really useful. You want to quit the game? Well, by all means, do so. So I'm just going to go around here and see if I can find a quest. I apologize if I'm skipping through the dialogue. This town is called Miskatonic or Miskatonia. I thought it was Mistakeonia actually, but I made a mistake. Ironically, I suppose. So here we have an old woman. Maybe she's got a quest for us. No, she just loves this town. Okay. Got down here. Oh, gag me with a spoon. Bunch of kids who uh, love each other. True love, isn't it wonderful? True. How old are these kids? Five? Cthulhu sounds like what I'm going to sound like when I'm an old man. What do we have going on in this town? This guy's basically telling us how to become a true hero. we got to go to the Shrine of the Heroes to the east. If we can pass the test within and reach the highest floor, your wish may be granted. Crazy old man. Here he's a member of an evil cult that worships an ancient false god. Good to hear I still have followers. I kind of like Cthulhu. He's the kind of character I can get behind. Ah, we won't worry about this guy. How about this? Gotta give me some cafe here. Why, just the other day, Dash, Elanolina, and Switchblade were entertaining us with stories of their heroic deeds. Uh, Dash and the other characters seem to be heroes that want to take out Cthulhu. I fought them once before, but I have a feeling they're going to be recurring enemies. We gotta find some kind of boss here. Let's talk to Shane. Yep, Shane's a he's a real smart dog, lady. Yes, praise be to Cthulhu. What do we have going on in here? This looks like a a shop, perhaps. Of course, I will. Mysterious fedora bedon man. All right, what do I want? Let's sell weapons first. Sell my sword, and sell my iron sword. I can buy weapons. Hmm. 
These are these are pretty good weapons. Let's press X to compare it to my current. Hmm. We'll give you strength plus ten, magic plus ten as well. Oh, that's relative to what I have right now. Okay. So that's much better. Let's purchase that for Umi, and we will sell. No, don't sell that. Let's exit and equip on Umi. Sharp trident. A little bit OCD about selling all these things. Okay, let's sell. Regular trident. Okay, now buy armor. What can we get here? I already own this. 500. That's pretty steep. 500,000! Uh, well, I can't afford that right now, but maybe one day. I can afford the cute dress. And I can afford the vitality plus 50, will plus 20. Let's buy this for Cthulhu. And then we will equip it down here. So we can sell our tunic and our fleece tunic. Not for a lot of money, but for a little bit. Sell, oh, sell armor, fleece tunic. Okay, got a little, recouped a little bit of that cost. How about this guy? This guy's just asking if we're thirsty. Hmm. Need to find what my next quest is going to be. Let's continue talking to this fedora, guys. Maybe this guy's got a quest for me. So he's just making a wisecrack about my face. Words I can't pronounce. Fedogan! Sorry, that sounds like I made an insult. I did not. Let's talk to this old woman who's pacing these flowers. Or old man. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. So he says something in Cthulhu tongue. Cthulhu says, I'm not sleeping anymore, obviously. This guy is not a true follower. He's unaware. Let's go into the university, I suppose, and see if any of these guys have any quests for me. If not, doesn't look like it. I'm just going to speed through this dialogue. I apologize. If you want to play through it yourself, feel free to shell out the, like, three dollars for the game. It's absolutely well worth it. Let's go and check in these bookshelves to see if there's any items. Alright, yes, these guys basically uh, give you knowledge about how to complete your battles. Nothing seems good here. I'm sure that's all hilarious, but please, I'm on the clock right now. Let us go up here. We'll just go exploring then. Maybe get to fight a few more random... Oh, get to fight a few more random battles. Let's go in the other direction. Got something over here, obviously. Ah, oh, a nice little castle. Seems like this is our next quest. They mentioned something about going to the Shrine of Heroes. Uh, all the great heroes have made a pilgrimage here. Fist Mix Strong Punch, Magalyn, Dash the Daring, Alma the Younger Hero, Rescue Man Boy, and now Cthulhu. I shall scale the heights of the Shrine of the Hero, thus proving to all that I am a true hero. Alright, let's kind of walk around here, I suppose. Looks a lot like the first dungeon from... The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. There's some treasure chests, but this is a very labyrinthine setup here. We've got orcs. Ooh, with a lot of health. Unfortunately for me, how much damage do I do? 42 times one hit? That's not a lot. Hmm. Let's use Insanity Strike to add insanity to one of the orcs. And we will use Siren Call to stun the wizard. Excellent. And so only those orcs can attack us right now. The wizard is stunned. I can't believe that. Oh, it actually did a lot of damage. So let's attack. Let's take this orc out of the equation. Ooh. Wow! Did a substantial amount of damage. Uh, let's use Flame Strike on the orc. And we will cast Heal on Cthulhu with Umi because she has more initiative. I thought, well, anyway, it all worked out for the best in the end. Jesus. Pretty powerful, aren't they? Uh, we'll murder the orc, and then we will do blind strike on the wizard in the hopes that he gets blindness. Oh, well, excellent. That worked out really well. Gained a lot of experience for that fight. I have a feeling I am not going to last too long in here. It seems like this is uh, meant to be an extraordinary difficult area. But I'm, I'm moving up anyway. Who are we dealing with here? Sore Heart and Will-O-Wisp. How much health do they have? 52, 52, 35, 35. Not a lot. Let's just do, uh, let's just attack one of the Will-O-Wisps, and then we will use Flood, the other one. Oh, agility dropped in half? That's not good at all. I need something that does damage to everything. Didn't I learn? Yes, you can. adds insanity to all. That's pretty good. And we will cast Flood again. Oh, man, they are, they are murdering me. 
But I got to them first. So. Again, lots of experience. Do I want to go down? I think I don't want to go down. I want to continue going forward here. Well, at least I got a treasure chest. Three potions, that's good. I've been using a lot of them. Definitely going to get into a, another random encounter here. But if I can just survive 25, then they'll stop coming. Ghost Knights. How much health? 65. Not a whole lot. Make sure to use Insanity on everything, and then just hit them all with Flood. I think that's the, the best strategy. Okay, all animals are, or all enemies are insane. I've, both of my guys lost an absurd amount of agility, but on the bright side, these guys should only take one more hit each. Excellent. More gold, more experience. Let's continue down here. Oh, that's where I want to go. There's a staircase. Oh, I, I can't get through there? Okay. Oh, Lord, I've become lost in the labyrinth. Gargoyle. How much health? 90. That's actually kind of a lot. Again, we will use our standard Nightfall, followed by Flood. Because I know that... Oh, where is it? Magic. There we go. Because I know that these guys can be kind of pains in the ass if you want to take them all out at once, if at all possible. Let's use a potion on ourselves. And then we will just do an attack. Excellent. Completely healed. Oh god, Umi is dead. But these things should be dead soon as well. Uh, let's murder the gargoyle. Please don't kill me. Oh lord. Okay, I'm gonna live, but it was close. Umi leveled up. What should we take? Plus 15 to all of those stats, or plus 25? Ooh. Let's go with those. Uh, plus 25 max HP, plus 25 max MP. I've totally forgot. Am I going exactly the same way I went before? Jane, let me off this crazy thing! Standard Nightfall, and then Flood. Uh, everything's insane, so they take more damage. Oh lord. Taking a lot of damage there. Let's murder the wizard by a combination of flood and regular attacks. That went really well, actually. Thulu's leveled up. Plus strength and magic or plus strength and agility? Let's go plus strength and agility. I want to have a little bit more initiative than I have right now. I'm just wandering around in circles. I've definitely gone this way before, but that's okay. Maybe a couple more battles and we'll call it a day. Ooh, three Will-O-Wisps. This should be a fairly easy. Use Nightfall and Flood. They can be taken out really quickly, actually. Yeah, not long at all. I'm not sure that this Cave of Horrors is all it's cracked up to be. Isn't there a chest back here that I could get? Or am I just walking the same goddamn path over and over again? Ooh, I don't like the looks of these guys. Necro Guards. No one is going to die again on his watch. How a ghost can wear armor is one of the great mysteries. See, a good sense of humor in this game. Let's make them all invincible. Hit them all with a case of flood. Seems to work pretty well. Ooh, but Umi is taking a lot of damage right off the bat here. Let's kill one of the Necro Guards by a combination of flood and a regular attack. Oh, actually, we did better than I thought there. I'm losing, I'm hemorrhaging magic points, essentially. Oh, we found the staircase up to the next level. Excellent. So massive door on the other side. Our goal is past there, no doubt. <laughs> there must be a switch around here that will open it for us. Hmm. Well, if I do indeed find that switch, I will probably stop the video because I don't want to give away too much story stuff. If this is indeed story stuff. Let's call this the last fight. We've seen a lot here. We'll go to Nightfall. We'll go to our standard Flood combination. Seems to be working pretty well for me right now. These guys do a lot of damage, though. Uh, we'll do a regular attack to take out a wizard in combination with blood. And then we only have one wizard left to deal with. Alright, now let's save the game, because we can save anywhere. And you can see there's a lot of slots for saving as well. Then we'll quit. We'll go back to the title screen. So in terms of quantity for the game's features, we've got new game, continue, lots of save slots, like I mentioned. Bonuses. Hmm, not sure what we got here. But the Annals of Cthulhu, master of not beating the game. Oh, so every time you beat a boss, it looks like you get, or uh, accomplish something, it looks like you get a new title. The Star Terror, so you can see it's Vanquisher of the Star Terror. That's an enemy that I defeated earlier in the game. Not completed Highlander mode. Hoarder of 1,245 gold. You can view the character Bromides we've unlocked. There's Cthulhu. 
I guess Umi will probably be down here, it looks like. Oh, maybe not. And the bestiary, we can see the monsters that we have gotten, on, although we can't until we finish the game at least once. Also got options here. Uh, I should know that when you start a new game, there's lots of different difficulty settings, and for bonus modes, you gotta beat the game to figure those out. If you start a new game, you can also start it with developer commentary, so you can find question mark boxes that will tell you a little bit about the development of the game. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, this has been Let's Look at Cthulhu Saves the World. Highly recommended if you're a fan of RPGs, or, you know, sometimes, even if you're not a fan of RPGs, this could be a really good way to kill some time, especially with the upcoming Christmas break for a lot of you guys who are still lucky enough to be in school or jobs that give you a lot of vacation. Definitely I could see myself playing this with a nice cup of hot chocolate in front of the fireplace. But in any case, $3 on Steam, recommended. I'll see you guys next time. This has been Northern Lion. Thanks for watching.